On February 10th, 2021, less than a few weeks ago, I stepped outside at night as I usually do. I took a deep breath. I looked up at the sky, looking for that pink, reddish dot in the sky. I've been doing that since July of 2020, looking at our destination and wondering at the possibilities and praying and hoping for the success of the arrival of the Hope Mars mission to Mars. On that day, on the 10th, I realized that the spacecraft was revolving that dot that we were looking at, at the sky, and that hope that we were praying and working towards for so many years has finally become a reality. The change was, when I looked up, was around that tiny dot that was less than, at that time, 200 million kilometers away from Earth, revolved a piece of equipment that I've set my hands on and worked on for so many years. That, for me, was transformative as an individual, but also as a person that worked on this mission. To take you back, this mission has been a series of challenges, but it all started from one thing, and that is a leadership that dares to take audacious visions and transforms them with their teams into reality. And that is one of the key successes of any nation that ventures into technology, ventures into space, ventures into establishing its industry to be deeply rooted in technology. And we are grateful for the leadership of the UAE, for our president, Sheikh Khalifa, for our vice president, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, for this opportunity that we wouldn't have ever dreamt was a possibility. We were given this mission at a very early stages and asked one simple question. Can we get to Mars by 2021? Can we have as a nation a scientific mission discovering another planet? Fast forward to today, we now have a mission that's orbiting around Mars. We now have data coming from that mission that hopefully will have great and significant scientific discoveries about the transformations that happen to, Mar to Mars. But today, what we look at and where we are today is an understanding of how to develop capabilities, how to develop a sector that didn't exist before, and how to ensure that Emiratis are working towards our vision and towards our growth plan as a nation. From this mission, I have learned three vital things. One, in the design of this mission, we avoided copying and pasting any model that existed out there because we were asked to build this mission. So what we did is we learned from others. We saw why they built their spacecraft in a certain way, how they, they approach the development of such a spacecraft. And then we selected the parts that were significant for us, the parts that would keep the spacecraft alive. And we removed everything that didn't make any sense or didn't have a place today. Because systems and processes, and this is very important to learn, systems and processes are in place for a particular time, for a particular instance. They're never set in stone. For us to have growth, we need to ensure that we're continuously reinventing ourselves, we're continuously being agile, and we continue to discover the frontier. Being a country that pushes towards the development of something that's new each and every single time means that there's no rule book out there or no guidebook out there that we should follow. And therefore, with the visionary leadership that we have and with the potential of growth that the UAE continuously strives for, we need to ensure that yes, we do follow processes, procedures, but we need to know that when you're paving a new road, when you're putting down new tracks, you are creating a new journey and a new development. Which takes me to the second lesson learned. We did not have a lot of the systems in place that we have today within the space sector for us to realize the, the mission. But we did not stop from developing this mission so that we can put the right infrastructure in place, ensure that everybody's trained up. We utilize this mission as a means to train up our people to ensure that our infrastructure can handle planetary exploration missions, and more importantly, to ensure an experiment with our system and our ecosystem and our industry to see if it's ready to design and develop our manufacture for space use. 
The third that we learned, these missions are very difficult. They're very challenging, be it from a design perspective, be, being from that we were doing it for the very first time, so our institutions weren't ready for such a, such a program, and being the risk that goes into it. Like we've always said, only half of those missions succeed and get to the point that where we've gratefully got into. Which means that we had a motto within the team, which is failure is an option when it is done on the path of progress to ensure that you are delivering on that point. It is normal and natural to make a mistake, but we need to ensure that we have a system of transparency in place, a system that allows for people to learn from it and move forward. And that is what we had on this mission. And perhaps the fourth lesson that was very important, and that's something that somebody told me very early on who has worked on other missions such as this, and that is, these missions are a success because of their teams, and they are failures because of their teams. It's largely a team endeavor, and that is something that I did not understand, because as an engineer, for me, if something succeeds, it's because the design and testing and development process was successful, and it tested for everything, and if it fails, then it's the design development process that failed in considering something, or a lifetime of something on the spacecraft ended. But today I do realize and appreciate the work of the team because we got to the point where we are at today because of the team. And one lesson that is vital to that and why upon reflecting was it the team? It is because in difficult missions and challenging missions and frontier missions and missions that you've never done before, you don't know everything out there and therefore putting in a system of transparency where every single member of the team is able to say, please pause and stop, I am worried about something, or there might be a risk that we might face, or there's something that broke, let's go and see why it broke, or there's something that doesn't feel right, and allows us to pause and look and reflect and check what is the right way of doing it. Because in some instances, we were able to circumvent major difficulties that were coming down the line because that system existed within the team. The other aspect when it comes to the team is the openness of the team, its acceptance to take on calculated risks, and its passion towards that one common goal to get to Mars. And all of us, in all of our jobs, every single member of the team worked on a daily basis knowing that, for us, we needed to launch in 2020. We will get to Mars in 2021. And we did everything in our power to ensure that we got that to happen. And that maximized the effort that the team put into this. So with that, I'd like to thank the Emirates Mars mission team. It's always been a pleasure and continues to be a pleasure to work with you in every single venue. It is because of you and it is because of the support of our leadership that we are today at Mars. And to you, our youth, this was possible by a team. When we first started, we were all under 35 years old. Um, and the experience that we had in, in, in the space sector at that time was from seven years to some people having close to eight years of experience in the space sector in general. But that did not stop us to strive to create big changes, to strive to have the right development process, and to strive to create opportunities for a lot of people, be it in the UAE or around the Arab world or in the world, you have to take daring, audacious dreams and transform them from hopes into reality. دولتنا خلال العام الماضي انضمت لمجموعة من الدول المتقدمة التي تمتلك القدرة والخبرة على إنتاج الكهرباء باستخدام الطاقة النووية. هنا أريد أن أذكر مجموعة من النقاط لشبابنا وأجيالنا القادمة. أول نقطة هي أن رؤية القيادة الرشيدة تركز دائما على تطوير قدرات الشباب العلمية والإبداعية. وأتكلم هنا عن البرنامج النووي السلمي الإماراتي اللي ساهم في ترجمة هذه الرؤية. برنامج أسس منظومة علمية ساعدت في تطوير جيل جديد من الكفاءات الإماراتية المتخصصة في هذا القطاع العلمي المتقدم وساهم بتوفير برامج تدريبية متطورة ومراكز تدريبية تطبيقية 
تعد الاحدث على مستوى العالم. نقطة ثانية في عام اليوبيل الذهبي محطات براكب توفر الطاقة صديقة للبيئة لدعم التنمية الاقتصادية ل 60 سنة قادمة على الأقل. ويكفي أن محطات براك الأربع بتوفر ما يقارب 25% لاحتياجات دولة الإمارات من الكهرباء الخالية من بعثات الكربونية وعلى مدار 24 ساعة الآن فيما يخص الشباب كان تركيزنا دوم على استقطابهم وتطوير مهاراتهم وخبراتهم العلمية من خلال توفير وظائف مجزية ل 60 سنة على الأقل تطوير جيل جديد من قادة قطاع الطاقة في الدولة واليوم أكثر من 500 طلبة الإماراتيين استفادوا من برنامج رواد الطاقة نقطة إضافية تعرفون أن أحد أهم الملفات المطروحة في الساحة الدولية اليوم هي ظاهرة التغيير المناخي وتأثيرها على البيئة ومن المهم أنكم تفتخرون بجهود دولتكم في هذا المجال وأنا بتكلم عن دور محطات الطاقة النووية المحطات الأربع بتحد من ما يقارب 21 مليون طن من الانبعاثات الكربونية سنويا يعني بما يعادل إزالة كل السيارات اللي موجودة في الدولة بختم وأقول أن الدولة وفرت كل الامكانيات والفرص والمستقبل ينتظر ويراهن على شبابنا المتعلم المتخصص في المجالات التكنولوجيه المتقدمه المستقبل ينتظركم واحنا كلنا ثقه فيكم والباقي عليكم انتم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته When talking about the impact of AI on economy uh, I want to bring it to a bigger context Artificial intelligence is uh, a uh, very powerful method to uh, understand advanced and complex data and to make predictions out of the data. So when I say about the AI impact on the economy, uh, uh, it could you know, uh, be uh, misunderstood as uh, potentially a uh, threat uh, for human workers because uh, we often perceive that uh, we human beings are perhaps doing the same thing and uh, with the arrival of AI technology, you know, uh, our job security can be uh, impacted. What AI is doing is actually, uh, on the contrary, not competing with a human uh, at the sectors humans are good at. It is usually complementary to human regarding uh, what human is not very good at. So this is like uh, having a calculator next to a retailer. You know, the retailer never want to do all the math and uh, do the calculation, but having a calculator is not displacing his job. It is going to make his job experience even better and make him more performant. So to create a university, a research university uh, under the name of AI is indeed a very, very visionary and uh, very bold move, which I'm very, very happy to see happening in this country for the first time in human history. It's going to give the country a tremendous upper hand in the global competition of uh, technology and the economy. To the young people of the country, you know, it's always uh, an exciting time to live in this uh, very interesting new age. Is it a good idea to start AI early or we should uh, you know, focus on uh, the fundamentals? and wait until a later time to learn AI. I think it is still very important to be prepared thoroughly for the fundamentals. It is more important to learn the basic mathematics, the basic liberal arts, and uh, learn the, the social skill of, uh, you know, of uh, uh, communicating and uh, interacting with people. One of the risks you know, in this new age of uh, social media, in this new age of uh, automation and AI, is that uh, many people start to lose the ability uh, to communicate. The best way is to strike a balance of embracing the new methodology and the new opportunity, but also keep the tradition so that uh, you become uh, better empowered you know, and also uh, better balanced you know, between what is the tradition and what is the new advancements.